Well, folks, I hope you're ready for it. The downfall of Amazon has officially started, according to Reddit. There is a viral Reddit post on the infamous Wall Street Bet subreddit that has the title, The Downfall of Amazon Has Started. And this received nearly 4,000 upvotes, which is a lot. That's a lot for this subreddit. And this in-depth write-up, it's multi-paragraph here, it goes into great detail, is from a seller on Amazon's third-party sales. As we know, Amazon's online retail portion is divided into two parts. You have the first party, which is Amazon selling their own stuff. This is similar like Costco selling Kirkland Signature. Amazon just lists their own products and they sell their own stuff. They're an online store. But then you have a whole other section, which is the third-party sellers. This is where people like you and I could list an item and sell it ourselves, And then we can either choose to fulfill it ourselves, fulfillment by seller, or we could choose to fulfill it by Amazon and use their various services. So Amazon selling is divided into these two groups, first party and third party. If we look at the numbers for last quarter, the online sales last quarter were 70 billion for first party. This was Amazon's stuff that they sold. And then the third party services were 43 billion. So Amazon is making a lot of money with their third party sellers. They're charging all of these fees, which is now amounting to around $120 billion per year. Now I can also see from this, the growth rates of these two different segments. The first party, the stuff that Amazon sells, grew by 8% year over year, which is still strong growth. It is growing far above GDP and as fast as most other companies. But then you have the third party seller services that grew by 19%. So the fees that Amazon is charging and the growth of their third party sales is two and a half times faster than their first party. And the reason, or at least part of the reason it's growing so fast is because they're raising prices. Amazon is raising prices on third party sellers and the sellers aren't happy about it, not one bit. The end of 2023, Amazon started to introduce these new fees that they're charging to sellers. And they did an entire write up and breakdown of what these fees are and how they're going to evolve over time. They first say that they're introducing an inbound placement and service fee for standard and large bulky size products to reflect our costs of distributing inventory to fulfillment centers close to our customers. So basically, this fee, which ranges from 27 cents per unit to $1.50 per unit that are large and bulky, is the fee for Amazon to take your product in one warehouse and distribute it across the country so it's closer to the customers. So far, Amazon has been taking the hit on that. They've been paying for it. Now they're introducing a fee so that the sellers pay for that if they use Amazon service. If you ship your own product to multiple locations, you avoid these fees. So they're basically saying you can use us, you can have us do it for you and ship our product to multiple locations so they're closer to customers, or you can do it yourself and you avoid this fee if you do it yourself. But they're forcing customers to ship products to multiple locations. And the reason being is because Amazon wants fast shipping. And if you only have your product on the East Coast, it's gonna take a long time for it to get to the West Coast. So they want it everywhere across the country. Now this fee is being introduced March 1st, 2024, which is why you're hearing a lot of noise from Amazon sellers right now. A lot of them are complaining because they're now seeing the brunt of this fee or the work that's required to do this fulfillment like Amazon has been doing. Now, they also mentioned that they're introducing a low inventory level fee for standard size products. This fee applies if you consistently carry low levels of inventory relative to your unit sales, as this inhibits our ability to distribute products across our network, degrading delivery speeds and increasing our shipping costs. Sellers can avoid this fee by maintaining more than four weeks of inventory relative relative to sales. These fees will apply starting April 1st, 2024. So we not only have this distribution fee that was implemented just this month, we also have a low inventory level fee. You have to keep four weeks worth of sales so that they can consistently ship it across their distribution centers. And again, this all looks like it's centered around the customer, making sure that they can get their product as quick as possible. The main goal for Amazon is to have, when you click a button, for that product to get on your doorstep the next day consistently and reliably. So they're incentivizing sellers to keep adequate amounts of inventory by this low inventory fee. And then they mentioned that finally, we'll expand the return processing fee to apply to high return rate products in all categories, excluding apparel and shoes. So if you're selling something on Amazon that's consistently returned, Amazon no longer wants to take the brunt of those return processing. So Amazon is introducing many of these fees to sellers and they're implementing them over the course of the year. Now sellers are trying to figure out 
these complex and nuanced fees and how they impact their business. Many of them say that it may actually save money in some cases, but most of them, the majority of sellers are saying that this is a big additional cost. It's going to be a price hike. And of course, they're not happy about prices going up. We can look at the case here. Chase the Capital Allocator is an Amazon seller that says, I've sold on Amazon Marketplace for 10 years and I've never seen Amazon sellers more outraged than they've been in the last week after the FBA inventory placement fee increased 200 to 400% for most sellers. So this isn't validated data, but in his case, he believes that Amazon is increasing prices by 200 to 400% for most sellers. For me, the cost per item to ship my average item on Amazon FBA went up 300% with the fee changes. Folks are absolutely outraged, especially low margin sellers. So we look at some emails that he's received from different sellers and different people working with his business. They go over the placement fees, how it's increasing by $36 per item or per package. We have other ones here where he's gone over different sellers saying that there's are going to be $400 per 1000 units, which is ludicrous, ridiculous. One of the Amazon sellers here say that this is a double whammy. They've been browsing through the forms, taking in the widespread frustration regarding the new inbound placement fees, and the situation seems to be reaching a boiling point. It's astounding to see shipment costs skyrocketing, $8 to $14 per box to an exorbitant $90 to $140 per box. However, I've noticed a significant piece of the puzzle that may seem to be missing. It's not just about the increase in fees for placements. There's an additional layer where we've been penalized for failing to meet sufficient stock levels to meet demand. That is the elastic demand price. Amazon wants you to keep a certain level of inventory depending on your sales. This essentially forces us to increase the frequency of our shipments to ensure our inventory levels are adequate. Failure to do so results in per unit charges. Amazon's strategy seems to be pushing us into a corner where we're compelled to send more units all the while increasing the cost for replacement. Now they say as a potential workaround, I'm considering sending a larger shipment to Amazon Storage and Distribute. This would allow Amazon to automatically pull inventory as needed, potentially helping circumvent these fees, or just switch to FBM. FBM is an abbreviation for the seller fulfilling it themselves, not going through Amazon's fulfillment network. And that's the case with all of these complaints. You see, Amazon has a defense here, unlike a lot of other big tech companies with a controlling marketplace. Amazon can say, if you don't wanna use our fulfillment network and all the services we offer, that's fine. You can use FBM. That's fulfillment by yourself. You're fulfilling it as a seller. So you can avoid all of these fees and all the trouble of what we charge, if you fulfill it yourself. But the truth is, and what these sellers don't wanna say, is that FBM is expensive. Fulfilling it by yourself is very, very expensive. So even though they're complaining about Amazon raising costs, the alternative is also very expensive. And this highlights the amount of work that Amazon has been doing at a subsidized cost. So we have many complaints like this from Twitter, with sellers on Twitter saying that these fees are sticking it to small businesses. But that's not it. We also have from Reddit, the Wall Street Bet subreddit saying the downfall of Amazon has started. Investors and consumers need to know this very important fact about Amazon. They just dug their own grave. The third party sellers make up around 65% of the sales generated on Amazon. And recently they did a dirty move to third party sellers that will have many leaving the platform or raising prices so high that Amazon becomes uncompetitive to consumers. Amazon just announced and implemented two new double dip fees that will crush third party sellers and that's not even an exaggeration. The first fee which has been implemented already is an inbound placement fee which is a shipping fee Amazon tracks on sending inventory to Amazon Prime and Amazon FBA fulfilled by Amazon. This fee has increased the shipping cost for third party sellers by six to ten times. Now, how does he know it's increased the cost by that much? We don't really know, but that's just what he's saying here. For example, a seller sending a truckload of inventory prior to this inbound placement fee to Amazon traditionally spent around $600 to $800, sometimes way more. Now, on top of this, they are charged with an inbound placement fee of around $3,000 to $5,000. This essentially wipes out a huge chunk, if not most, of the profit margin from sellers on Amazon. Add in the additional fee Amazon's charging, 15% referral fee, just to list the one on their site, or eight to 15% fulfillment fee, 
FBA picking, packaging, and delivery, storage fees around 78 cents per cubic foot, and advertising costs around 2 to 15%. I wouldn't call that really a fee. That's an optional thing to advertise, but he's grouping it in with the fees here. The second fee, which will take place in about a month, is a low inventory fee, which is a fee imposed by Amazon algorithm when inventory is starting to run low at Amazon fulfillment centers. This fee can be anywhere from 32 cents to $1.11 per item. Now he continues on, why is this important for investors and consumers? The only solution for third-party sellers to barely keep their head above water and to maintain remote semblance of their razor thin margins prior to the new fees is to raise prices. I'm talking 20 to 30% price increases are required at a minimum just to keep back to par. You wanna talk about all the issues with inflation? Well, now you know corporate greed is being shown at its finest. Amazon reported $30.4 billion net income for 2023. But with penny pitching third-party sellers even more at the expense of driving prices up for consumers like never before seen on the platform, this will cause consumers to look elsewhere to shop other than Amazon because Amazon will now be highly uncompetitive. It's just a matter of time. Amazon shot themselves in the foot and needs to reverse course on these absurd fees. Now, of course, after Twitter started to blow up with complaints, Reddit started to blow up with complaints, we also had the mainstream media jump in, with Fortune doing a huge write-up on Amazon and these exorbitant fees they're charging. We have many quotes here from customers, and I won't go over the entire article, but I just wanna highlight some of the things that they they are saying here. It's becoming increasingly difficult to sell on Amazon. You're getting squeezed from all sides. It's a very high fee. It doesn't make sense how much money they're charging. I'm very experienced on Amazon and I've spent so much time on this, but for many items, I still don't have clarity on how exactly I'm going to sell profitably yet. It's crazy. You gotta precisely thread the needle to not get completely killed. This article was published March 1st when Amazon charged that distribution fee. And then only a week later, March 8th, we have an article that the FTC is now probing Amazon on its new controversial fees around its $140 billion seller business. Now, why is that important? Because the FTC chair is Lena Khan. Lena Khan, who has made it her life's ambition, her life's goal to go after Amazon. That's what she really wants to do. In fact, in 2017, she authored Amazon Antitrust Paradox. This is while she was still in school, the Yale Law Journal. This was back in 2017 before she was ever part of the FTC. She even had it then that Amazon was a big bad company. Lena Khan views herself as some Obi-Wan Kenobi going after the bad empire, the empire which is Amazon. She wants to take Amazon down a pig. And it's clear to see that in her long-term ambition and taking down Amazon, these complaints have added fuel to her fire. She wants to take down Amazon and now she has the complaints from sellers on Twitter, on Reddit, and highlighted by the mainstream media. Top sellers are upset that they have to pay more and Lena Khan is going to use that as fuel to take down Amazon. I would not be surprised. In fact, I think it should be expected that in the coming months, Lena Khan and the FTC will launch a new lawsuit against Amazon over these fees. So where does that leave us? We have lots of sellers complaining and we have the FTC likely suing Amazon in the coming months. The first thing I wanna mention is that raising prices is not illegal. The FTC is going to have a very difficult case if they sue Amazon on the basis that they're raising prices unfairly on sellers. Defining what's unfair to sellers is legally dubious. And Amazon can always go back to the excuse. They can go back to the, I believe, very rational, reasonable excuse that sellers don't have to use their fulfillment network. Sellers can sell by FBM, fulfillment by merchant where they simply do the work themselves. They ship it out to the locations themselves. They do all the manual labor themselves. The reason that they don't wanna do that, even though they would avoid most of Amazon's fees, is because they would take on the costs of the shipping and doing it themselves. So most of them are admitting that even though Amazon is raising prices dramatically, it's still cheaper than doing it yourself. It's still easier, more cost-effective, than doing it yourself. This also proves how valuable Amazon's fulfillment network is. Even though these sellers are griping and complaining about these new fees, most of them will still choose to pay it because it's still easier than doing it yourself and still cheaper. Many of them are complaining that they already have razor thin profit margins. And if the fees go up, they're going to have to raise prices or they're going to be unprofitable. That may be a problem for some businesses, but look at the case of Amazon. The people complaining about profit margins should look at Amazon's profit margins over the past decade. We can look at it right here on the ratios chart. 
we look at this over the past 10 years, Amazon in 2014 had negative margins. The FTC didn't jump in and defend Amazon there. They were fine with Amazon losing money. Profit margins of half a percent in 2015. Now, if we look at the amount of revenue Amazon was doing in 2015, we can see that right here. Amazon did $107 billion in revenue and made half a percent profit margin. The government didn't care that Amazon was basically running a giant charity, building out all of this infrastructure, investing in the US economy, providing tens of thousands of jobs, hundreds of thousands of jobs. They didn't care at all then. Third party sellers were happy to sell on Amazon when they were subsidizing the cost of their logistics network. In 2016, it bumped up to 1.74. And then for a couple of years, it stayed at that point. 2018, the profit margins were 4%. This is still below Walmart. Now, an important thing to keep in mind here is that during this time period of profit margins being 4 and 5%, this is for the entire company, Amazon, the whole thing. But AWS has profit margins of 30%. So all of this profit right here, presumably, is being generated by AWS. The only reason the company had positive profit margins at all was because of this unaffiliated business with retail. In reality, Amazon has been losing money on their retail business for the better part of a decade. The most recent year, 2023, Amazon had 5.29% profit margins. 5% profit margins for the entire company when AWS had around 30% profit margins. So most of this, again, is being driven by AWS. So as Amazon raises prices on third-party sellers, there's going to be a battlefield of opinions based on different incentives. As a shareholder of the company, I see this as a positive thing. Even though there's going to be a lot of complaints and a lot of noise, ultimately what Amazon offers to sellers is an incredible value. And many of them will still continue to fulfill their products by Amazon because they know of the value of all of this type of logistics being taken care of for them. They also know that the customer of Amazon is unlike most customer bases. They're higher income and they're very sticky. Amazon customers are not gonna go to some third-party website to save a couple dollars. They prioritize the trust with Amazon and they prioritize the consistent fast shipping. So even if prices go up slightly, I don't see Amazon customers leaving. So when I look at the stock, there's gonna be a lot of opinions this year, but I still remain with my prediction that Amazon this year in 2024 will generate record high amounts of cash flow. My prediction is somewhere around $70 billion, which puts the valuation of the company right around a 4% free cash flow yield, which I think is still good value. So I'm bullish on it. I don't think it's a downturn of Amazon. Maybe you agree more with the people on Reddit or the people on Twitter. Let me know what you think. That's all for now.